Hey, this is Eddie Efton. Before we start our great episode today that we have with Jordan Rubin, our guest, I just wanted to tell you about... Mexicans. Why are they? <laughs> no, Adam and Eve. <laughs> Adam and Eve, our sponsor. Uh, you just uh, go to the website or go to them through our website, jimandeddytalkshit.com, and uh, click on Adam and Eve. Uh, there's a banner site there. Click it on there. Anything you buy there, you get uh, 50% off if you on go through. Almost our, anything you buy almost there. Almost anything. Almost anything yeah, yeah, you yeah. buy there. Because there is a couple of things that if you buy there, they don't give it. The animatronic uh, Jason sex doll is yeah. not 50% off. It's free. <laughs> and it's really Jason. No, you go on there 50% off. You also get three free uh, DVDs. DVDs. Not of your choice, but exciting DVDs nonetheless. And you get free shipping. I, so I would go for Anal Whores 4, but only if you've seen the first three. Yes. And you got to put in the promo code. You got to put in Jason. So go to adamandeve.com on our website, jiminettitalkshit.com. And now just listen up for uh, this fantastic episode. Two douchebags on a couch One's an asshole, one's a grouch And relentless are their mouths Jim and Eddie Talk shit Jim and Eddie Talk shit Jim and Eddie Good evening or good morning or whenever you decide to download this fantastic podcast. This is Jim Jeffries. I'm here with Eddie Yift. I'm sitting on the couch with little Harlow the dog in between me. Uh, Jason's in the room. Say hello, Jason. Hello. Lelite's in the room. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Yeah, we got Machete as always. He never talks. No, never talks. Getting very, microphone. getting very good at pinball. Very good at pinball. He, he is the, the next person to hold the crown. Lelite's very good. Jason's not very good. Eddie's pathetic at it. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely pathetic at pinball. <laughs> and and I pretended like I didn't care, but the whole week while Jim was away, I practiced day and night. <laughs> and I'm pathetic. Uh, Jesse Shapiro's here, and we've got a guest today, Jordan Rubin, an old friend of mine. I've known him for how many years? 12, 15, something like that. Going on 12, 15, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Going 12, 15, uh, about, Jordan Rubin. It's got to be about 12 or 15 years now. We've never, we've never met, have we, Jordan? I don't think so. I think I've seen you in clubs, like, pass, passing by. Uh, I'm glad you said by and not out. <laughs> I've seen you in clubs passing out. Are you a heavy drinker? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not as bad as I used to be. I used to be like all the time, every sort of day, but now I'm not. Right. He's selective about it. Like I'm like, selective. Yeah. I gave up for like a good five, six months completely. Right. And now I just sort of drink once a week. It's got to be a really special occasion for him to get drunk. Thursday. Like somebody somebody more famous than him is around. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Like so if somebody more famous than Jim goes, hey, you want to get drunk? He'll go, okay. I'm on like, it. I'm like on someone it. like James Smith or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so have you been on, on TV before? <laughs> I've been, I have been on the, tu on the tube, yeah. Jason, get me a beer. Jo <laughs> <laughs> Jordan has his own show right now on ComedyCentral.com called The Download. I saw it the other day. It's very, very funny. And you had, you. I, you had I, Justine on I was right. joking, Jason. I don't really want one. Had you heard of I, Justine before? No. I know her just because I'm from Pittsburgh. Do you know who this I, Justine girl is? Uh, that rings a bell. I guarantee you've wanked to her. I guarantee you have. She's the biggest thing to come out of Pittsburgh since oh, it's Jeff Eddie's, Goldblum and you. It's Eddie's sister. <laughs> and Flash Jams. The, big, right. the biggest thing to come out of Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. That's Eddie's mum on holidays. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, want to get into large mothers. Oh, look. You, I've, I've, if you want to see a photo of my mum, use Google Maps. If, you're, <laughs> if your mom and Machete had a sumo wrestling competition, who would win? My, my mum's got a bad back, an actual one, not like Jason, so I assume Machete. <laughs> and also, my mother's almost 70, so I think she'd win. <laughs> um, yes, I, Justine, though, is, uh, she's this, like, internet sensation girl. She's, like, one of those people that's never done anything that, except she's, like, really good at the internet. She became big because she, she got an iPhone bill that was something like 400 pages. Then she did, uh, when the original iPhone came out, I guess AT&T printed these bills that were too gigantic. And she went online and was like, itemized the bill and went through because she was someone working in, you know, tech and data. Why didn't she get the all you can talk plan? Because they didn't have it in the beginning. Um, or, or maybe they did, but they still listed all your... I've had every cell phone device of all time. I can't remember getting a bill like that in the mail ever, but... I once had one for 900 pounds. 
I mean, I've had huge bills, yeah, but I've never had a for, stack for a month, nine hundred pounds for a month. Well, I, the data roam ship. But I was I, I was overseas and I was using yeah. it in sex calls and. Well, I went to I went to Montreal about six months ago for twenty four hours and I had an eight hundred dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Really? I'm not making a joke about sex calls or something. No, it, it, because the iPhone when you go over the border. You're, it's the iPhone's constantly sucking data. It's constantly checking for push email. It's constantly browsing. It's always looking for something like a cell tower, I guess. And so I left it on. I didn't know that. To yeah, turn you it have off. to turn the data roam off. What right. happened to you too? Yeah, I have a, I, I have a bit on stage about it. I got a seventeen hundred dollar bill. Yeah. Because I left my data roam on. I thought I was going into Wi-Fi. Right. But I had the data roam on, so I called them. And this is not a lie. The woman's name was Beatrice on the phone. Mm. And like, how often do you meet a Beatrice in your life? Like, they're very like. Yeah. They, I think they went out with like driving Miss Daisy. Like yeah. that's an old. I name. like old people's names. Yeah. Sadie. What, Sadie? My, my, but my point is, my grandmother like, was you called don't, Betty. You don't hear this name often so I call the woman and absolves Mavis. me Mavis Gertrude Mavis is my other grandma. the woman absolves me the woman absolves me of the guilt like she goes I'm gonna take it off your bill I understand we have this happen often I'll right. take it off your bill that's what they did and I was like awesome and then then she goes uh, just hold for your confirmation while I'm holding I get disconnected from at and these old people can't use the phone so, so I call back and I don't get her. Right. I get some guy and I tell him the whole story over and he goes, yeah, I see your problem, pay your bill. Wow. And so I go, can you get Beatrice? And he goes, there's 40,000 employees here at AT&T. There's yeah. no possible way I could ever find Beatrice. And I go, her name's Beatrice. I doubt you have another Beatrice there. I think he called an old age home by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and some lady was just like, yeah, you're absolved of the whole thing. She's like sitting in a room with a wire not even connected to the... Well, this is where I got in trouble. So I said to the guy, I go, what if hypothetically, and I said the word hypothetically, I said, what if... Isn't, I had, isn't that redundant? What if hypothetically? Yeah. <laughs> that is true. I said, what hypothetically, what if I had kidnapped Beatrice's daughter and I have her in my basement right now? Right. And he goes, sir, are you joking? And I go, that depends. Can you get Beatrice? <laughs> he goes, sir, I'm going to need to get the police. And I go, you do that and Beatrice's kid gets it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You should do that in your act. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Jim Florentine used to do that shit. You know when he do all those prank calls? Yeah. You worked on that show, didn't I you? I wrote on Crank Anchors for a few years, and we did a bunch of calls together. Remember I actually, I wrote a call for him that we did that was one of my favorite calls, which was he called, he's dri we had, you know, car blazing sounds, like he's driving on the back roads of some, in the woods, and uh, he gets, he, he's calling to find out his electric bill. He's like, yeah, I had some problems. We got a real electric bill and an address. And so he calls and seemed legit. She's looking it up, and then we have a car screech sound, and he hits something. And the woman on the end of the line is like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I just I hit a deer. And then I just start coming in very low, just going like, oh, God. Oh, and she's like, did you hit a person? He's like, no, just tell me about my bill. Listen, don't you worry about it. Talks her through this entire thing. And it just gets worse and worse. And I'm just like, you, but you, but you kicking me. And, 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 she, and she's like, I have to call the police. And he's like, listen, you don't. And then it ended with a gunshot. And, and then he blew his own head off. And then she actually called the police. Yeah, because he told me. Like a couple times, the police came to his house. He one time, the phone company called him, like to give him a better plan, and he said something like, "He, he or he needed a loan because he got his girlfriend pregnant." That's it. Right. And they offered him a loan, and they're like, "Well, we can give you five hundred dollars." He's like, "I need a thousand." And they're like, "Why?" He's Is like, this a call? Or this actually happened. He would prank call and record them all, and so somebody was offering him a loan, and he goes, "Can I get a thousand? They're like, "No, you can only get five hundred. He goes, "Well, that's it. Then I'm gonna need to." I, I can't afford the abortion. I'm going to have to do it myself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so she starts screaming in the background, and he's like, get over here. And uh, he said he went out that day after they recorded the call, and he came home, and the police had, like, knocked down the door and gone, like, all through his house. <laughs> Because the people that were offering the loan called it. But he had that happen like two or three times. He did a few of those calls. I think that call that I wrote was actually based on one of his calls, which I think he drowned his own grandfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that one. In the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> 
he like somebody's offering him like would you like long distance service for five cents a minute and and the grandfather's going oh scrub my back <laughs> 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 and he's like shut up and all of a sudden he, he keeps drowning him and the person selling is like i don't know how you should you should really do that and all of a sudden he goes oh oh no <laughs> He's not breathing. <laughs> <laughs> they were really good. We did something interesting today for uh, Jason. Hour. Uh, Jordan, you're not familiar with our hour of power here. Jason the is... The podcast? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole podcast is called The Hour of Power. But uh, Jason does a segment of the show called The Hour of Power where we let him interview our guest because Jim almost quit for a while. And I said, he, Jim said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I said, what are you going to do? I don't give a fuck. I said, Jason, what are you going to do? He goes, I think I'll have my own podcast because... Jim and Eddie, you might be the, the uh, we have might, the fan We might base. bring in the fan base, right. but he's but, got the talent. But I'm the talent. <laughs> so we're the backbone of this whole organization. <laughs> so no, don't say backbone. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Don't say backbone. He's, he's got terrible back pain. Oh, How sorry. is your back pain? It's all right, man. It's yeah. like, I'm doing better. It's sciatic, though. It's still, I still have a little sciatic. bit of a flare. Yeah. Psychosomatic. He explained it to me I wish. yesterday. Psychosciatic. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great rap album name. <laughs> um, so what other pain have you got in your life at the moment? Body or mental? What would you say? We we haven't played Portal in a while. We can play Portal we this evening. We can play Portal this evening after the podcast. How about that? I've been away. I yeah. actually have hung out with Jason lately. Yeah, we, we hung out and I did a one-handed push-up. At a party. At a in party. the middle of a party. Sounds like a man who should be in a wheelchair with back problems. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, did a one hand and push up. Oh, the pain, the pain. Jason, as soon I, as pussy's involved, I'll do the worm. I was, I, I was coming. <laughs> home. If I want to see the worm, I'll fucking do it. <laughs> I was coming home from a gig on Saturday night, and I go, "What are you doing, Jason?" He's like, "I'm at the best party ever. You'll love these people. They're all good looking and rich. Get over here. This party's great." I walk in. It's five people all sitting on a couch that Jason has fed pot brownies. <laughs> that, this, this, I got, I got, I got to tell, tell a story. Yeah, oh, if got in uh, trouble for that shit. If <laughs> if uh, if you've seen my my last special alcohol cost, which people in Britain, in Britain might have, but you know. <laughs> anyway, I tell a story. If you see me do do this story live, I tell a story about taking a friend with muscular dystrophy to a brothel. It's like a thirty minute routine, and it's a friend of mine. I took him to the brothel with his brother, and it's you know. So there's this big story now. It had just happened in my life, the actual story, not the routine. And I flew back from the Melbourne Comedy Festival, and I was hanging out with Eddie. And Eddie has a friend. Now, 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 this friend of Eddie's, a fairly well-to-do young man. I won't say how he's got his money, but he's got he's got some cash, right? We go to this hotel in the middle of LA, this really prestigious hotel, and I proceed to tell Winston and Eddie this story. And I'm talking about, so I've got this guy with muscular dystrophy and there's hookers and there's all these type of things. And then walks into the room. In the middle of the story, the hottest. The hottest. I've lived in LA. I've, I've been all over the world. I can say this, they might have been the hottest. Like girl out of I've a movie, seen. like if you said five hot chicks are going to walk in, like all like, like supermodels. Tens, supermodels. All of them just come in and they were so hot that I didn't even think, I'll stop telling this story, I might be in with a chance. Just from looking at it, I thought, i got no chance here. <laughs> and I continued on with my hooker and brothel story with the guy with muscular with dystrophy. muscular dystrophy and how his pubic hair was matted down. <laughs> there was cum in there. And, and, and how Jim didn't want to touch that part of him while he was dressing him. And, 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 and the girls are just standing there, and I'm like, this, why do I have to be here right now? <laughs> and I was looking at Jim like, do you know what you're doing right now? No, I thought there was no, there was no we weren't going to make friends with these girls. There was no way they were ever going to talk to us. They all left. They all left. They didn't even finish <laughs> the rest of the story. These five hot women came into our lives and left right away. Not much of a story. You had to be there, I think. <laughs> I've always prided myself on telling stories without having to end it with, you had to be there. And I just did it. <laughs> I was just telling Jim uh, before you showed up that I went to acting class with you back in 1842. We did? In, in New York? Yeah, remember my, what was her name? Joanna Beckson? Joanna Beck. Was that the one where Darren Aronofsky was in the class? I was just class? telling him, yeah. Darren Aronofsky, the director of uh, The Wrestler. Black, Wrestler, Black Swan. Black Black Requ Swan. Requ Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, mm. actually, the dog's actually, your dog is <laughs> sucking me off. <laughs> <laughs> that dog just likes to lick jeans. Oh, okay. <laughs> it means um, you've wanked in those jeans, haven't okay. you? <laughs> <laughs>
Um, Jim's trained her well. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's at the point of the taint. That's Same. okay. That's yeah. the sa- that's the same chair that Moshe Kasher jerked no, off no, no, last no, week. No, no. Just 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 pass the dog over here. She can lick my jeans. Um, <laughs> over here. I actually I actually was I worked on the Oscars this year and I went to the. Hey hey, well done on that. They were a great success. Oh thanks. <laughs> yeah. me. Tell me you wrote the jokes for them. They were good. Uh, well, did, did you go did you go up to James Franco and go try to act like you don't care? I wrote the opening <laughs> film, which I think went off pretty well but is easily forgotten after the rest of the show <laughs> um, they look like two presenters from the mtv awards yeah. it didn't look like the, the fucking oscars the, yeah I'm, I'm a fan of older hosts for some reason um who I, know how to deliver jokes well i mean i, I it, it was an interesting year yeah, <laughs> old, older hosts or someone who's a comic of some description not just a comedy actor like someone who's actually gotten up and told jokes before yeah, th- there's that school of thought. <laughs> um, like, who? Where was the meeting where they decided on those two? Like, I don't want to lose you your job, but no, no. I think you I, may have the, done the that yourself. Over. Show's <laughs> over. <laughs> um, but uh, no, well, well, quickly to get to the point before I forget with my ADD, um, I ran into Darren Aronofsky, the director, the Black Swan, who had taken this acting class with us, and I walked up to him just to say hi. I hadn't seen him in whatever it was, 10, 12 years, and he goes. Hey, remember we took that acting class? Jordan. He remembered. Yeah. Yeah, because every time I see oh, him, he, he kind of yeah. runs When I see him, he kind of runs away. And I was with my, one of my closest friends, and he's like, how did you remember that? <laughs> I went to a movie. Where he from dressed me. like the Black Swan or something? Is yeah. That, okay, well, that's yeah, yeah. I saw him at a movie premiere once, and uh, I went over to say hi to him, and he like completely shrugged me off. Oh. And no, then, he remembered you. That's the yeah, reason. Yeah, he, he, he did. And then later that night, when no one was around, he came up to me to say hi. And I was like, no, 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 no. Say hi to me in, yeah, front, in front of all of those others. people yeah. again. Uh, but he was not the greatest actor in our class. Well, I just remember, it was funny, I remember Who him. was? Was it Eddie? No, I was a terrible actor. I don't remember who, I, I, I know I must have been the worst, but I do remember um, him talking about, I talked to him on a break in, in class, and he, I said, well, I guess he went to Harvard or something, yeah. and he was like, uh, I was like, what do you, he's like, well, I'm more of a director. I was like, so why are you taking class? He's like, I just want to, understand the actor's experience back then i was like the actor's experience you know i'm just like <laughs> thinking like who's this guy i'm like he's like i'm directing this movie it's called pie and i was like you know i'm sitting there going like pie yeah i'm sure that one's gonna be a good student <laughs> um, pie like just looking, rolling my eyes what is pie, pie? Is pie like a I, was, I, I actually I, haven't seen it I, here's the thing i remember him being the biggest dick i've ever met in my life i think he's calmed down since then because i've talked to him well, a couple times, and he's nicer, but he was one of those very arrogant, straight out of Harvard guys. But he has every right to be. No, no, no. He, he pulled would, it off, hasn't he? But what no happened, offense to other Harvard guys that are going to hire me on shows. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he was doing our acting class, he had just made the film, and I was trying to make a film at the same time, and I would call him. I, he, I had his phone number. I'd call him on the phone, and I'd go, hey, Darren, I'm trying to raise money. What do I do? And he had a really unique way. He sent, like, friends and family, like, donated money to... Um, also having a good script must have had something yeah, to do with yeah. it. And uh, right. so he would help me out. And Did I'd you call, tell him you had a bad script? Yeah, and I'd call him, like, <laughs> twice a week and, and get these... Twice know, a week? Yeah, yeah. He was helping me out. Okay. Yeah. And then one and day... And why did he brush you at that party? I can't <laughs> figure this out. <laughs> and then so one I used day, to bother this guy every day. And then one day I called... Guy's him. directing The Wrestler. You're yeah. like, how do I get my low-budget, uh, <laughs> funnier die video off the ground? <laughs> can, I get, can I get Mickey Rourke when he's got a lunch break to do something? a quick cameo in my it, film. It's it really funny. It, it gets better. I call him one day on the phone and he goes, uh, uh, I guess you didn't hear. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, well, um, I'm kind of busy now. And I go, uh, what? he goes, my, my film, I won Best Director at Sundance. And I went, oh. And he goes, some not really going to be able to help you anymore. <laughs> that's, I, I, that's the Darren I, like, I remember, though. I like the honesty. <laughs> like, because right. I couldn't do that. I would just, uh, I'm sorry. And then not take my calls. Yeah. There's an amazing uh, article I read this week again, which I'd read a year or two ago, which I'll forward to you. Maybe, I don't know if you guys ever post stuff on the website or st- that someone talks about, but they can't yeah. remember what it was. Because it's this great article uh, by, uh, I think, pretty successful screenwriter, and the article is called, No, I Won't Read Your Fucking Script. And the whole thing is basically something that I think we all probably experience in this business to some degree of people asking for help but not knowing that it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> the context of like, you know, even say in stand-up, someone come up to you like, hey, I want to be a stand-up. I thought, or, you know, your mother goes, 
oh, he's moving to L.A. and he wants to be a stand-up. I told him you'd take him out to coffee. And you're like, don't, I don't. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, my mom's big on that one. But it's not just about not, you know, that can come off as very callous. And this guy uh, did a great job of explaining the reason why, you know, people come up to him and he it basically explains that he has two piles of scripts by his bed. One is a pile of friends asking him to read. And the other pile is that his agents are waiting for him to read. And so he feels if he grabs one from the friend pile, he feels guilty. If he grabs one from the one that's work, he feels guilty that he's ignoring his friends. So where does this random guy who knows his sister's friend's cousin that hands him a script fall into that you know category? And he's like, I don't have time to read your fuck between my writing and my family and these two piles of scripts. I just simply don't have time. I feel like you have to help like the 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 least likely to succeed person you will ever meet, which is why we have Jason on this. Well, show. No, I can yeah. I can help comics who come into town. A little, like I can do that whole suggest. These are the people you call. This is where you should go. Right. This is, but I'm not gonna take you on the road with me. And well, that's the problem. Like you know, they, sometimes they you hand them a bit and they they don't stop. A lot of people they become ask, like Eddie with Darren Aronofsky. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people ask me for help just because I'm Australian, and they're like, I'm Australian, as right? Well. And I'm like. I never really worked in that country. I don't know. See, but I help all the Australians. But that's the thing. It's it's the expectation. Yeah. Like, if there's any connection, oh, you're Jewish. Oh, you're from Australia. I can't remember. He's going to help and me. And someone who, who, if they're listening to this, who's a friend of mine, remind me this. But I don't remember even when I moved to England bothering people for help. You just, <laughs> you just not, do you, it. You just do it. You just pick up the gig guy and you find out where the things are. You ring the club owners and you, you have can a, can you I have go? A right. go. Yeah. And you don't get on and you don't get on and, and you start getting on. you start getting on. I mean... But, uh, and, and I don't mean that to be, like, I do, I'm one of these guys that anytime someone says something nice on Twitter, I immediately direct message them back and say, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Like, I go through all day. I'm doing this all day. Thank, great joke. Thank, I say thank you specifically. Really? And then they go, I can't direct Riley back. Follow me. And then it just gets all weird. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't do it. I've got so many fans. It's unmanageable. I, the, uh, only people, <laughs> the only people I talk to are the ones that say rude things. So I have uh, a Eddie's very busy the strippers. Day. You but see, this is the thing with Eddie. Eddie. Eddie always types back to him and says, "Fuck you," like that, right? And then he, and then they always uh, write public, publicly, or no, no, but to him personally, <laughs> but, but publicly and stuff. And then they always write back to Eddie something like this: "I was just trying to get your attention, right? <laughs> I was, I just wanted us to be friends, right? I actually really like you." And then Eddie's like, "Oh, okay, come to the show, right?" So that's that's what that's that's what Eddie does. Now he's done this publicly so many times that right. his fans know the only way to reach him is. <laughs> is not through kindness. Right. <laughs> if, if, if you compliment Eddie, you'll never get his attention. Yeah. If you go, oh, you yeah, rat faced fuck, right. you're not funny. Eddie will fucking. Oh. I, I had a woman write the other day and she goes, You were talking about some fat, annoying guest on, or a, some fat, annoying fan on the show. Was that me? And I wrote back, No, but you're fat too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I like how someone can't just be annoying, they have to be fat and annoying. We, we, we had, a, we had a, on the episode of this show that I'm doing on ComedyCentral.com, uh, Morgan Murphy, you guys know. I, I, like, I like Morgan, I like yeah. Morgan a lot. So she's, coming, she's on the show this she's week. She's very dry. And we just taped it, and she was talking about how on Twitter, this thing that drives her insane, which is she'll, like, uh, I guess something, uh, Germans, there was some news story, I can't remember the exact thing, something like they raised the price of potatoes or something. And, um, and she wrote a tweet just off the top of her head, she just said, that's got to be the worst thing the Germans are ever responsible for. <laughs> she said someone immediately wrote her and wrote, um, what about the Holocaust? <laughs> and that's the kind of thing, she put it, like, that was a perfect example of the ones that drive me. It's just, it, it, and she's, and Morgan put it uh, in, in the episode, she says it perfectly. It's, like, it's not just not getting the joke. It's the, why are you following me? <laughs> like, Morgan was saying how she... You know, it's not like she's you've seen her talking about parenting tips or something <laughs> on morning television, then all of a sudden she's writing these Holocaust jokes. I hate the people who write to me and go, when are you coming to Chicago? Or when are you coming to this place? Go, it's on the webpage. Yeah. Right. It's there you put no effort in. Yeah. You put no my effort. name yeah. and the thing into Google, it'll show up. And then sometimes you're nice to them. You'll go, I'll be there in July between the 16th and 19th. And How do go, I get tickets? What time? And yes. you're like, yes. Yes. fuck off. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. What link do I have to get to? No, do a little bit of work. But this is the, sa the same whole thing that I'm talking about with this article. It's like the, how much, at what point, you sound like an asshole at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, like, why are you sounding like an asshole? You went and said something that was already Googleable, and then yeah. they asked for more. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it is the thing. Gigs used to be this way. You used to go down to the record store. You used to pick up one of those magazines that had everything that was coming to your town. Yeah. And you went, oh, fucking great. This band's coming. Yeah. This comic's coming, whatever. Now, now, you, now you're essentially text messaging now people Elvis have Presley to be, or whoever. Now people have to be invited. Yeah. And they have to ask the actual person a direct question. Right. Are you going to be doing that joke about such and such when you come and play Seattle? Yeah. I might. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. I can't think of that right now. And yeah, but you do. You sound like a fucking asshole. Imagine people really. Uh, texting or DMing or at replying Elvis Presley or <laughs> well, this, Frank Sinatra. This is, when are you coming? This today is again? the fact right now. As soon as this is being listened to, my Twitter's like this right now. When are you coming to Seattle? When are you coming? Well, I can't believe right. people like people are going to do it to piss I, me I, off. And I can't right. believe some of, the, some of the biggest celebrities. I follow Judd Apatow. That's the worst when they do a joke like this. Like they'll play about and then. It'll be a week later. You'll forget this went up. So they're like, hey, when do you come to Seattle? When? And you're like, well, I don't get it. And they're like, kids, you talked about it in the podcast. You're oh, like, oh, leave me alone. Oh, yeah, because all next week, all I'm going to get is Eddie, you rat-faced fuck. I, right. I, 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 well, I tell you, i got to give something to our fans. The Eddie If has AIDS campaign. Let's end it now. It's over, but you've done a wonderful job. Amazing. An amazing job. You've gone above and beyond what we thought you I would all can't do. I can't believe how far they went. My went. favorite one is the picture of you looking all quizzical, and it's like got the got milk. You see what I think? And it says got AIDS. Um, I have to say, I think Wikipedia is off. You can't do Wikipedia. That's no, it, just got, too... it got taken down really quickly. No, because that one, his mum reads Wikipedia. I like the t shirt. That said, Eddie is ha has AIDS, and it had a picture of him on Maury Provich with the Maury Provich little logo that said, Eddie has just found out he's got AIDS. And, <laughs> and Eddie's pulling one of these, like, sort of, well, what? What happened? <laughs> That's <laughs> funny you say the got milk, got AIDS thing. I remember when I was a little kid, it was probably one of the first times I heard an offensive joke, I think. It was probably this joke, uh, you know, when AIDS came out, and then people were afraid of AIDS, and it went through, like, all. And then. Someone, a kid came up to me. I must, I must have been eight years old or something. I remember a kid saying, "What does gay stand for?" And I'm like, "I don't know." He's like, "Got AIDS yet?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I remember just being like, "Oh God, my, my that's awful." You're not, you don't joke about that. My, oh, you do joke about my it. My first, thing. my first recognition of of off collar jokes were always racist Aboriginal jokes. That's all I grew up with. See, yeah. we didn't, we didn't healthy, know what Aboriginals were. Well, they're the same as your black jokes. No, they're not, because your your Aboriginals are Native American. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I do, what I like about the Aboriginal. It jokes. is like. Newfies and they, they are sure. in they are in poor taste, but they're, they're the same as the black jokes over here, but they've got a more outback feel to them. Yeah, yeah right. You yeah. know, there's an Australian more rural. Like, what does an Aboriginal woman use for a vibrator? What? A Coke bottle filled with flies. <laughs> right? Now, right. that's... that's oh, quite, No, I don't, is, I'm not condoning that joke. I'm just saying... I am. I'm just saying I'm, in I'm the sense... It. That, you which, know, which, and I like the, also the reference in that joke, slight reference to uh, the gods must be crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 a little bit of that. Coke bottle, wasn't that or something? Yeah, yeah, what, what's, the, what's the one? An Aboriginal walks into a bar with a with a with a uh, seagull on his shoulder, and the barman goes, "Where'd you get that?" And the seagull goes, "Down at the dump." <laughs> <laughs> My, I'm back to the age joke. That is just the, complete. The seagull, it's racist for anyone. No, but it's still a bit Australian. There's a seagull there. And there's a, it's a pub. Oh, can I, can I, 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 tell, I, can I tell one of those joke I, jokes? I, I yeah, gotta I tell go. my favorite age joke that I heard as a little kid, like when AIDS first came I out. I like that you have a favorite AIDS oh, joke. I've got a million. A guy. <laughs> a lot uh, of them been dying <laughs> out. A, 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 a bartender at like my dad's club where he plays golf said to me, he goes, did you hear Greg Luganis has AIDS? And I went, no. And he goes, do you know how he knows? I go, no, he goes, the gerbil popped his head out of his ass and saw his shadow. And you know, like the, you know the that's groundhog. That's your favorite. I, I don't love. love I don't love AIDS I jokes, love but I love that. the the, the groundhog. That's the groundhog day. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, the yeah. groundhog comes out, sees the shadow, goes back in. But I love that I've. I felt. Oh, he does. I didn't know Greg again. He says AIDS, and then. I I was in a I was in the corporate box. This I, I feel terrible already saying this. I was in the corporate box for my agents. My agency gave me two seats in the corporate box to see one of the Lakers playoff games. Um, when they were still in the playoffs. Did they and limo you there too? No, no, but we were sitting there fucking and the, the, the corporate box next to us is the one owned by Magic Johnson. And Magic Johnson was sitting exactly next to me, but just with a sheet of glass between us, right? And I said to my dad, I said, Dad, I was sitting next to, I was sitting next to Magic Johnson, right next to him with a sheet of glass next um, between us. And my dad was like, 
Thank God for the glass, eh? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like, my dad was excited. He went straight for AIDS. My dad went, oh, yeah. Um, Jason, I, he hasn't even been in the episode. Can you please, can we do an hour of power with him? Now, why is it called an hour of power? Because his surname's Hour. Oh, okay. His last name's Hour, and Jim said that's what he should tell any girl. That's his pickup line. Yeah, his pickup line should be, are you ready for the hour of power? When like really, that. he does. He can go for an hour, but that's just because he has to take a shit. Yeah. You can't come when you're you upset. Shit, What's right? wrong with you today? I have to go pee really bad. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no, no. I drank two glasses of yeah. water. No, 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 no. You can last out an episode. All right. You're like a child. Every time it's like, it's like you're, you're in the backseat. It seat happens of, once in a while. You're in the backseat of the car of life and you're fucking bitching constantly. <laughs> I need yeah. to stop. I need to wait. <laughs> my brother, my brothers are picking on me. This chair hurts my sciatic nerve. But Jason, why don't you do the hour of power? Let's just do it. Come on. Da -na 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 -na. One, he hasn't two, got a bad back. He really he needs to go to the toilet. He da -na 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 -na. He's a hair mogul. <laughs> and he's got two friends and they're not me already. <laughs> <laughs> he's never bought a shirt in his life, but he's got many. He... he Feeds people pot cookies and doesn't tell them. His dog would kill itself if it could hold an implement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, D go ahead, Jason. That's a good way to start with a cough. Yeah. yeah. That's how Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, episode of the Hour of Power with our guest Jordan. Hello. <laughs> He doesn't remember his last what's, name. What's, 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 what's his what's last Jordan's name? Last I don't remember your last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a deli sandwich, a deli sandwich. Jordan... Pastrami. Salami. No, 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 the sandwich, the, the whole sandwich together. Club. No, yeah. Jo Jordan. Don't give it to him. Jordan's 16th sub with meatballs. <laughs> Come on, guess his name then. Get it. It's a Jewy sandwich. This is the greatest Jordan hour. Jordan Rubin. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Do you like on, Rubens? From now on, just, I love Rubens. From now on, Rubens. I love a Ruben. Oh, yeah, yeah. Delicious. From now on, just call him Jordan Jewy Sandwich. Chewy Sandwich. It's okay. like a triple alliteration. He's like a superhero. Jordan, Jordan Jewy. Can, no, no it's, it's only double. double yeah. Can yeah, you do your show? Well, this is hey, typically it's his show. Don't interrupt oh, him. You're right, typically, yeah. this is how the hour power goes. I go about three or four seconds, then okay. I get heckled and laughed at. Oh, okay. okay. I it's did like sex for him. Yeah. Is there a lot of pointing and crying? <laughs> Typically, yes. So, uh, Jordan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, you enjoying the uh, talking shit program thus far? <laughs> yes, thus yeah. far, yeah. You know, a lot of people that come down here actually enjoy doing the show because it's a little bit looser format and, and not, not quite an interview or, or, you know, it's not like a typical podcast where you're just talking. Yeah. What, mm. Yeah, we're swimming. I've what the I've, fuck ever we doing? It's true. I've never heard a <laughs> podcast where people just talk. Yeah. No, I mean, you know. Yeah. I don't really have much today. No, no, come on, come on. <laughs> come on, you were doing good. Would you like me to do a song? Do you have a new song for us? I have us? a new song. Like this, okay, I know what the new song's about. No one will play me the new song. I've heard from Meredith today you're looking forward to the song. I don't you know, think we're going to let you play it. She's really talkative about yeah. everything I say to her, I guess. Um, I don't think we're going to let you play the song today. Okay. I, I really, You played it for me today, and I didn't really like it. Um, but... Um, why? What's so bad about the song? This has been the Hour of Power brought to you by adamandeve.com. <laughs> Remember, most purchases, 50% uh, off. And what, what, what code do you put in? You put in Jason, J-A-S-O-N. And you get 50% off. Most I, items. I would like all of Jason's fans to buy something from Adam and Eve. They sponsor that Hour of Power? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, That's, why not? It's the shortest show ever. Uh, Jason, um, we did something, though, today. Um, Lily, do you have those? Yeah. Um, we gave Jason an exam to take, which was a psychological profile. Oh, I've heard about this. Can I read this? Can I read this? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Psychological profile. You, you get, what you, did you think I was giving you? You get one, I'll get the other. Okay. Yeah. yeah you, give me, you give me one of them. Um, wait, we gotta, we're not going to know who... Oh. <laughs> I'm mixing them up. Okay. I've got one. Jim has one. And uh, one of them is Jason Hour's psychological profile. The other is John Wayne Gacy. Okay. You know, and John Wayne Gacy is one of my favorite serial killers. He's the one who dressed up as a clown and used to have sex with men and then call them faggots afterwards <laughs> and, and say that he was doing a good job by killing them. Right. And he just fucked them because, you know, they deserved it or whatever they did wrong. Okay, so... And you also have... We are going Richard to... Richard Ramirez. Okay, well, we have Richard Ramirez, too, who's another uh, serial, serial killer. killer. And But what we're going to do, I'm just going to read these two. Jason, 
Jason Hours and John Wayne Gacy's. And we are going to read a couple of the answers. Not necessarily in that order. No. And you are going to guess which is which. Okay. Okay. So Based on knowing, not knowing much about, I love serial killers, but not knowing much about those two and just meeting. This is just, this is just the forms that they had to fill out for an occupation. Okay. Jason, Jason, what are you doing? Seriously. This is, he's he's got to go hide the body. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes, I have to go. He can't not fucking go an hour without having a piss. All right. Well, have you ever done that during a stand-up gig? Actually, I have done that. Yeah, I've done in the gig. I, I've halfway through the gig yes. gone, I really need the toilet. Wow. Can we all convene I've back a, again? Wow. A bunch of I was doing like an hour and a half set, yeah, yeah. you know, like it wasn't like any, but a couple of times. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to read John Wayne Gacy's psychological profile and Jason Hour's psychological profile, and we'll talk about things as we go along. Okay, but we're going to read. Did you know this is what we were doing? Yeah. No, okay. had, when I was giving you a psychological exam, what did you think I was doing? You know what I like? You're both fat clowns. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think I was doing? Being you, whatever. I what, what do you mean, you? Being You're always up to something. Something on the other end of it. I don't know. No. I called you and said, come over. And you, I go, what are you doing? I'm at the coffee shop. And I go, come over. I need you to do something. I hand you an exam and go, sit down and take this. <laughs> and you didn't think about that? All right. <laughs> and before we start, before we start, I just want to mention if we can thank the Museum of Death in Hollywood for allowing us to even get I would like to that, thank the Museum of Death. I've been yes. a big fan of Scientology since I've moved out here. Oh, I've been. Oh, right. Yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's that's not. the other the one. The psychiatry one? Yeah, no. the it's psychiatry just about Scientology. death. It's about. All right. So I'm, where is that I'm located? In Hollywood. Let's go age, weight, and height. Because <laughs> those are all he's all right, let's, let's, see. let's see if it's close. Jason's age is 39. All right, we're 50. This is obviously John Wayne Gacy. He's 5'11, 225. 5'10, 220. Wow, very similar. <laughs> yeah, that's, Jason wrote his you know what, that is That's, uh, that's, that's uh, serial killer height and fat. <laughs> Jason wrote with his home was uh, Panama. Yeah. I don't. But, well, that's no. where I was born. Yeah, yeah, but you're not from Panama. But I'm not, like, I mean, what's home, though? You're not Panamanian. I didn't live anywhere long enough And does he's, John Wayne Gacy have three half-brothers and three half-sisters and a midget mother? Is, is your character, is Jason divorced? Yes. John Wayne Gacy is also a divorced person. Okay. I'm Mo a similar height here, and fat. How about this one? Most treasured honor, Jason's the gift of life. Uh, three times man of the year. <laughs> at, some, at, at some fucking men's club or something <laughs> perfect woman or man woman John Wayne Gacy <laughs> independent thinker self-starter man bright bold honest dependable cut neck he actually wrote <laughs> cut neck here cut neck no he didn't do that he didn't. Jason so, wrote ideally you are the perfect man or woman for yourself in reality they don't exist <laughs> Did you just? Did you actually write that? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's like you're supposed to choose your own happiness. It's like you don't need anybody else in the world. But you're you supposed don't, to be. You don't even have a type of woman that you're attracted to. All right, right, no, right, right. no. I mean, like idealistically. Well, okay. What, what is? I, we'll go off something for. What is your ideal woman? It's tough to call. Like I like all different kinds of women. A heavy sleeper, I imagine. <laughs> no, no. What, what, no, honestly, like what, what type of hair color? What type of build? What type of outlook on life? I actually like uh, tan. You know, olive skin, complected. Dark haired girls. Mm -hmm. you know, Dark haired girls that he can dye their yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, he's, he's right next to her. Yeah, yeah. Thin, <laughs> uh, uh, Armenian. No, no, no. I mean, but I mean, I like Latinas. Lots of hair on their yeah. back. Yeah. You like Latinas. Us. Yeah. Us. You, you, us. Latinas, you know, us, not Latinos. Jason's just attracted to people who are lazier than himself. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We've got a couple of Latinas. What if it's a perfect woman? Like Jason does. Perfect woman or man, Jason put Duke. Childhood hero. My grandfather is what Jason wrote. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John F. Kennedy. <laughs> that's, that's who he was. And uh, Donald Trump. Current hero is Donald Trump. Uh, you, mate, Macy? How about for hobbies? Jason put life. Gacy's still alive? Gacy no, died, dead. but he was around when Donald when Trump, Trump was alive. young and wow. up and coming. Yeah, he's huge in the 80s too, wasn't he? Trump. Right. Favorite TV shows. This is great. John Wayne Gacy. What do you reckon John Wayne Gacy's favorite TV show is? Dallas. Unsolved Mysteries. Bozo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Unsolved Mysteries. Or Bozo the Clown. Unsolved Mysteries and National Geographic specials. <laughs> uh, Jason's hobbies are life. Um, correspondence, <laughs> oil painting, and study of human Interest. interests. That's uh, life. Jason's favorite meals, rocks, 
a rock spicy tuna roll. Yeah, that's my favorite. Oh, that's my right favorite yeah, meal yeah, as my well. Favorite, I had yeah. that today. It was very good. It's very tasty. Jim, Fri so fried, fried chicken. Is that is John, John, John Wayne Gacy's, uh, you know, which is weird because he always put white paint on his face. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jason's ideal <laughs> evening is a meal. Um, okay, ideal evening. Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> And dinner and drinks. Okay. Nobody knows I'm... A Jason. character who loves to tease and joke around. Jason says, heavier than I look. <laughs> is, is that serious? Yeah. yeah. I'm I always think, heavier than I look. I think I'm heavier than I look as I'm well. always heavier than I look. I'm 210. I'm sorry. I'm like 200. I don't care what John Wayne Gacy said. This is the funniest thing ever. Jason wrote, my biggest regret, the last 13 years of my life. <laughs> Uh, you know what? John Wayne Gacy is a fucking horrible person. His biggest regret, being so trusting and gullible and being taken advantage of. <laughs> his, wow. his regret is being taken advantage of after all the people. What I don't like about people, duplicity. My biggest fear, rejection and abandonment. Pet peeves, people that don't wash their hands. Jordan. Uh, what he doesn't like about people? Phonies. Oh. I think that's kind of normal, though. Uh, I don't know. Friends like me because, Jason wrote, I'm fun. I'm outspoken and fun-loving. Behind my back. Wait, Gacy doesn't like phonies? No, yeah. Gacy doesn't like phonies. No, no, no. But he was real. He was in the moment when he killed people. <laughs> Jason says, behind my back, they say I'm retarded. <laughs> the, the bastard got it made and the... And I can't read and that. And he's grandiose. And he's grandiose. Here we go. Wow. That's people in history he would have liked to have met. Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci. Ben Franklin, Tesla, and Sagan. What if I Tesla's cool? What what I think <laughs> about the band? What I no, think I of this country? Great. Too, if though. people would work for it instead of against it. Oh my God! Jason wrote, "It was great and can be great again." Power doesn't define greatness. Oh. <laughs> That's because I watched that Too Big to Fail last night. That, Thought, that also sounds like something like uh, Batman would say. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts on? It's not who I am inside. <laughs> <laughs> and he jumps off like a building. Okay. <laughs> but that just sounded like Batman. Wings. That sounded like Batman if he's Krusty the Clown. <laughs> yeah. Thoughts on crime. Too much political corruption. Oh, my God. And allowed drugs by government has offset the balance of judicial reform and punishment. Jason says the exact same thing. No, I said that, that corruption... <laughs> pretty much breeds the ground for crime. It's kind of like a reciprocal... Thoughts action. on drugs. Make some legal to avoid crime block all else to... Uh, to uh, avoid crime or block all else to this country. Okay. There's Jason there's wrote, thoughts on drugs. N haven't taken enough yet. This bit's not going well. No, it's terrible. Let's terrible. get rid of it. That, yeah. was, that was the elite's idea. Well, you're supposed to <laughs> let him... No, Lily. No, it didn't Lily. Work it wasn't all. good. It, it wasn't was a good terrible. bit. It was Boo! You suck. Hey, I want Lindsay. <laughs> Bring Lindsay back. back, you hairy Armenian whore. You've ruined the show. That's because you don't have the cognitive abilities to... Oh. Oh. That was awful, hey, Lily. Oh. You've ruined the show. You know how many it's people... You, oh. you, know how many, you guys can't make oh. it funny and you're blaming it on me. No, we can't yes. make things funny. And yeah. you've got oh, you, he has have identical you got, similarities. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So does Jim. Oh. Yeah. I, he, I bet you if he took the test, he'd be right there with me. Lily, go. I should have done the Except test for hobbies, he'd put Spider-Man. Go have ball. sex with Treadwell. Oh yeah, Treadwell. We're going to have him back on the show. Yeah. We're going to have Treadwell take your Who's position. Treadwell. Paul yeah. Provenza brought this guy here named... Uh, Don't he writes to me, he hates me. <laughs> He, he Paul, blames Paul me for everything that went wrong on the like show. He was like more retarded than Jason, and he has sex with like he's like eighteen, and he has sex with like sixty-seven-year-old women, and he he was gonna be so exciting and, and crazy. Lead hooked up. Right? No, he was just such a tar. He was just so him. annoying and oh. trying so hard. And then we gave him shit, and then he wrote to Jim and was like, "You're an asshole for putting me on your show." Well, I've and said he could come back on the show and redeem himself, but you know, it's and even Jason had. He I was I, allegedly, I was the meanest to him. I don't remember that. I remember that's the night I hurt my back, actually doing the worm yeah. for, against Treadwell. We've heard this. Um, Isn't Treadwell the program that made Jason Bourne? Yep. I think so. Treadstone. 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 The reason I used Treadwell was Timothy Treadwell was the dude that got eaten by the grizzly bear. Oh, okay. Grizzly Man. Did you ever see that documentary? 
Grizzly man, yeah, sucks. It's fucking funny. The guy goes out and hangs out with grizzly yeah. bears that in, guy was in just Alaska. A total nut job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he talks about how he's like best friends with the grizzly bears. It was like the same movie as uh, the Sean Penn movie, but is Sean Penn movie is hipper. Is yeah, that the with Emil Hirsch. Is that the movie where the bear eats the guy at the yeah. end? Yeah. I've always heard about this film. I've never seen it's this fucking film. It's fucking awesome. Herzog, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's it's like it's ruined for me. The ending's ruined. No, no, for no. Me. But they tell you at the very beginning yeah. of the film that he dies, and it's still awesome. You're rooting for him. It's like the eaten. crying game of yeah. those movies. The whole movie, you're like, when's he gonna get eaten? I can't wait. Mm -mm -mm. You want to see him get? I don't eaten. even remember. It's Did it's you see it on camera? No. What happened was uh, the camera fell on the ground while the bear was eating him, and then Werner Herzog. Uh, has the tape the and takes it to his best friend and she, he's like, I have the audio, you can listen to it. She puts headphones on, he listens and he goes, now I'm going to destroy it. It was like the oh, Osama yeah, Bin Laden remember, pictures, right, we're yeah, going to yeah, destroy right. it. And it's like, well, nobody really gives a fuck, let's look at it. I have a, I have a quick question for every all yes. all five of us. Do you have a mic? All four, yeah. yeah. Uh, without jokes, can you guys, t and, I, and I know mine, I just thought of it, Tell me the the craziest footage you've ever seen that's you know is real and is not like joke or staged or. Like, Can like, I go first? The, yeah. Um, the craziest thing I ever saw was a porn, and it was a girl getting fucked by a Dalmatian, and I saw it when I was like fifteen. And you saw the dick going in, and yeah. that's yeah, what, yeah I like a pink dick just right, right. back. That's what back made her what that she is. That is pretty insane. Pretty I've great. seen I've <laughs> seen that. Yeah, I've yeah. seen those. I've seen animal <laughs> stuff, but a Dalmatian would be the, pretty. The insane. one where the guy puts the jar up his ass, <laughs> and the ass <laughs> cracks, and the blood starts dripping out, and he yeah. pulls oh, it out. Okay. One guy, one jar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. One guy, one jar. Yeah, that one's pretty horrific. But this is Eddie if comes back every now and again to the house. The, I don't know what's wrong with him. When, yeah, when I, like when I first moved in here, Eddie would call me down to the living room to watch like some guy putting a nail down the end of his cock. <laughs> and that would yeah. be like, Eddie would be like, I've got more. And I'm like, I don't want to yeah. watch it. Or someone just poking <laughs> an stumper, eyeball. The guy with his foot stump, like shoving it in another guy's <laughs> oh, ass yeah, to, the, yeah. to, the, to, the, to the Donkey Kong soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, oh. no, I got to give that one's pretty cool. Eddie, yeah. Eddie found footage of two gay guys and one guy lubed up he was an amputee and he, and he had a stump leg and he lubed the leg up and he was fucking with the stump up the other guy's wow. ass and they're in bondage gear but what I like about it more they how, both how seem you know very gay? happy how do you know they're gay <laughs> and, and they, <laughs> they had moustaches so what's yours Eddie they After, were, they, so if you're a connoisseur of these videos which one honestly he, shocked you the most of anyone you've seen um I've I'm not going to tell you who sent it to me, and I think it was illegal that I watched it, because okay. I think it was a snuff film. Okay. But have you ever seen... I don't think there's a snuff film. I think it was. They put this Japanese woman... <laughs> but so this is one that Jim has seen, but it wasn't have as I, alarming I, to you as the Have snuff. I showed you this? No. They put this oh. woman in shrink wrap, Okay. and then they suck all the oxygen out of it. Right. And, uh, like, I literally have only watched it the one time because I was so fucking... Does she try to fight out? Nothing ever. Like, they'll tell you. I can watch anything. It's good. That's how those face. Asians stay so, so young looking. <laughs> Put anything in cling film, it'll last. And so what happens? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to bask in that. Uh, so, so they put her in, and that it's like... That's not like, bad a joke. She's in, like... Have you ever seen when people, like, vacuum pack yeah. their clothes? Yes, and yeah. So she's in it. And I don't know why she's like willingly doing this. Like the guy's like, it, she, it was like, I don't know who was working the vacuum machine. It might have been like Jim Jeffries. Because the woman's like, okay, I'll try it. And they just start sucking the air out. And all of a sudden she starts fighting like, oh my God, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. And then they just fucking like suck her air completely out and she suffocates and dies. And so you see, okay. And I went, I just witnessed a murder. Was she naked? Yeah, completely naked. Wow. And then I wiped the cum off my stomach. Right. And I uh, was like, this is probably illegal. I said, don't be funny with this. Uh, okay. No, but it's All right. True. What's the most horrific thing you've ever wanked to? Wait, wait, wait. Jordan's got Oh, yeah. Something. I got to say mine. He's probably going to top us. <laughs> no, I'm not, it's not going to top it. And you may have seen this. But for some reason, this was the most alarming thing I've ever seen. It was, uh, wasn't even sexual. It's funny. Every one you guys said it's been <laughs> sex. It was the guy that jumps out of the plane and his parachute doesn't open. Have you oh. seen that? Oh. Oh. But he survives, and yeah. so he lands in some like bushes, yeah. and he's just bloody, and you you it's see unreal. his. I haven't he's seen got that. a camera the whole time. I haven't seen that, but I did see the guy in the wingsuit. You know what wingsuits are? No. Yeah. These guys put on wingsuits, and they can basically fly. They parachute out of buildings, and um, they they or out of uh, planes, or base jump, and they come down, and they've got a suit that makes them pretty much like a bird, and then they fly. But this guy, they fly along cliffs and go yeah, up. I've down, seen that. Yeah. And this guy goes, and they try to get really close to this bridge where people can take pictures. Yeah. And this dude just hits the bridge. Head first. And the two other guys with him 
their cameras get covered with blood wow. as he hits the bridge. I think I saw that on America's Funniest Time Videos. <laughs> uh, by the way, the uh, One Guy, One Jar, if you're listening to this, go to, not Cat Williams, who's, who's the other comic? He's a little guy. Cat Stevens? <laughs> <laughs> little black dude. Sorry, uh, Yusuf yeah, Islam. Yusuf Islam. <laughs> <laughs> I love Cat Stevens, but is anyone who gets that into religion, I can't really be on board with. I just can't believe he did that jar video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah, religion time fundamentalist. To make a change. No, no, no. But I have to tell you this because you have to watch. It's the funniest thing you'll ever see. There's, a, you know, how people do the response videos. Like it's everybody watching two yes, girls, one yes. cup, or watching one guy, one jar. The best parody of that ever was on Human Giant. You ever see that? No. Where they did the, I guess Rob Hubel cut his penis off. <laughs> And then it gets you really huge and viral. And you're saying, your parents have seen it. Everyone's seen it. And they're showing the reaction videos. <laughs> and so then he's being interviewed on the news. And Aziz has is the guy who makes funny faces. And so they're interviewing like viral video stars. And Hubel, I guess, had, you know, 25,000 hits. And <laughs> Aziz makes funny faces. And he has like 70,000. Oh, and he's mad because he cut his cock off. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, yeah, he's like, so <laughs> he's just giving him shit. Well, for, this is, um, oh, I know the name. His name is Lil Duvall. And he's a, he's a black comedian from like Atlanta, like little tiny guy, and his name's Lil Duvall. And back when MySpace was big, I wrote as my influence Lil Duvall. I didn't even know who he was. Right. And I didn't know he was big, but apparently he asked a couple black comics. He's like, you know who Eddie Ift is? Because he says I'm his influence. And he wanted to like... Why did you write him as your As a joke. Just if, as if a you joke. didn't know who he was. Because he was always on MySpace. He was one of those guys that's that marketed who site a lot. that's you want people to go to to see that video? Okay, so I stumble upon him on One Guy, One Jar. He pays his like sidekick, who's kind of like a Jason. He's this big, fat, black guy. He pays to sit in front of the computer and watch One Guy, One Jar. But the black guy, the big, fat, black guy, only has one eye. And the other eye... Oh, his, I've seen this. His glass eye is a star. He has a star in his eye. And he has him watch it. <laughs> and I, tears are coming out of my eyes as he's watching it because he pays him $1,000 if he can watch the whole thing. And he goes, oh, this will be easy, this will be easy, this will be easy. And he sits down and he goes, oh, what kind of crazy nigga does this shit? Oh, oh, uh, 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 oh, what kind of, ni what kind of crazy as a nigga? Oh, uh, uh, and he starts like vomiting while he's watching it. And it is... So much funnier than even the guy bleeding out of his asshole. Yeah. But I, you know what I will? The Jason. thing I was going to tell you a fact that I, <laughs> I learned a fact this week, which I had never heard about, which is, um, which I had never thought about. That people who are s like extremely kind of morbidly obese, because this guy I know was is a wine importer, and he his uh, his someone he works with from France, I guess, comes over. The guy's morbidly obese and can't fit into airplane bathrooms. Right, and so he has to not drink or or eat for a day or hours, almost as if he's going into surgery anytime he flies back to London from L.A., which I never even thought about because oh he can't God. pee or if if you have to poo or pee. Yeah, they are. You, they which are I never thought about. Like even if you're in first wow. class, the bathroom is still this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I when I when I was in grade school, I don't think I ever took a shit ever in in like grade school. I would never use a public toilet. I never used the, uh, the toilets to a shit at school, not once. Ever. I went home, and I'll tell you why. In I was in first grade. My cousin was in you second grade. You tell me I'm a germaphobe. I once went a four-day camp I, I, without I'm a, shitting. I'm a fucking freak when it comes right. to like germs and stuff. Like I eat all natural shit and whatever. He knows I'm a weirdo. But when I was in first grade, my cousin was in second, and his best friend was second. We would meet in the toilets. And to, wank each other off. Yes. <laughs> and kick the stall doors in. That was like the fun thing to do, to try to catch someone taking a shit. Because no one took a shit. It was like weird to take a shit. Right. This one day we meet there, we kick the toilet door in, because we see feet at the bottom. And there's a guy in there, uh, his name's Paul Constantakis. And Paul is in there. And he is not... Uh, He's the president of American Express, though. Yes. Well, we don't know what happened we because, know, listen, to Paul is standing there with not just shit, like, on the floor. It's on the toilet. <laughs> it's on the walls. It's on his hands. It's on his shirt. Oh. It's on his face. He has... It's like he... That's why no one ever shit there. Wait, wait, the place was cursed. He just fucking shit everywhere and then, like, danced in it. I don't know what he wow. fucking did, but we freaked out. And you know what we did as little first and second graders? We went to the office and told on him. Why would you? I don't know. We Did went you take one of those forms and fill it out? <laughs> <laughs> Jason said it funny. Um, so, so we went and we told on him. And 
for like the next like three weeks, he was known as Pooh Man Paul. Everyone oh. called him Pooh Man Paul. Only for three weeks? It, well, he left the school and never oh. came back. <laughs> but I don't know why we told on him. That reminds me of us. I got away with that once. Something like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was in the fourth grade. No, no, no. I thought you were going to go. Week. I thought you were going to go. I got away with that once. I once went into a school and smeared no, you know, like, his shit. You know when you're a little kid? You know you're a little Left kid? Left him in a cubicle? In your names and everything you own when you go to, like, because you go to summer camps or something like that. Oh, my mother still would write my name and, I would, and things. And I was, if we I were walking, it was the end of the day. I had the same policy. I never, ever want to go to the bathroom in the schools. It was the end of the day, and it was like, I thought I could sneak out one of those little farts. And I happened to be at the end of the line that was going to the bus home. And, like, it just, it came out, and, like, I ducked it in the bathroom, and, like, I went to throw my underwear in the trash. I was like, oh, shit. We've told this story before. We did? We yeah, did, yeah. You told we the told the story, story before, before in one of the first few episodes. Are you sure it wasn't when you made me do stand-up no, on the thing? No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, it's similar. Boo. Boo. I'll tell you a shit myself story. I was uh, I was on Singapore Airlines flying out to Hong Kong or something like that to do gigs, and I got food poisoning on the plane, right? And I was feeling a bit crook, and I left my bags with the baggage guy to fucking bring them up. Anyway, I shat myself in the elevator. Like, Ooh. like just, like, it was not, it just came across me, like, I was fine, I checked in, I'm in the elevator, and not just, like, a little follow-through of a fart, like, completely shat myself. <laughs> Just like shit dribbling down my legs, just ah, crying. Wow. And I ran up the hallway with a fucking trail of shit behind me. I got into the fucking uh, shower, took everything, started rinsing myself. I was shitting in the shower over and over and over again. And I thought, okay, I'm fine. And I put the white robe on, just feeling the most horrible I've ever felt in my room. And then the guy knocked on the door to give me my bags, he opened the door, and I shut the white robe. <laughs> All right, we got a, a couple of things we got to do before we go. I want to thank, we got some donations. Uh, some people really helped us out. Joshua Mancuso, whoever you are, thank you for your support. Uh, really good guy. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. Uh, Scott Martin, thank you very much. David Zimmer, Jennifer Marks, and Robert Saunders. Uh, chick uh, donated. You guys can still donate. Uh, help out the show. We got a lot of uh, people and working Chaz on the Bono. show. And Chaz Bono. Yeah. Uh, make how, sure. How, how do they donate to you guys? Uh, the, on our website. You go to jimandeddytalkshit.com. And how does There's it donate? Is it like PayPal? It's PayPal, and they just donate, and they get uh, T-shirts and uh, cool. CDs and DVDs and uh, posters. So make sure you donate. We'll take care of you. You guys, thanks for taking care of us. Uh, you've been great. You can find Jim on... Uh, jimjeffries.com and yeah. uh, as I said Chicago Comedy Festival coming up is the next real big gig that I'm doing where yes. I'd like to sell some tickets yeah so uh, find that go to Jim Throw and Eddie the first pitch at Wrigley Field Jim and Eddie talk shit.com also go to Stitcher Stitcher Radio uh, put in the code Jim and Eddie uh, also Jordan anything you gotta watch Jordan's show I really really enjoyed it oh yeah uh, you can check out the download at comedycentral.com or yeah or just go to my Twitter you've got enough I'll, Twitter followers you have a million Twitter followers I do not yeah you do how, many, how many do you have I think I have like 60,000 or something that's uh, a lot man yeah. that's a lot for a private citizen like myself <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason uh, what do you have coming up not much <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can find us. Go to our websites. You can find everything from Jim and Eddie Talk Shit .com. So just go there. Also, adamandeve.com. Please help out our sponsor. And what? What? Oh, and join the mailing Jim list. Eddie, Jim and Eddie. Com. Everything. Jim and Eddie Talk Shit .com. Jim and Eddie Talk Shit .com. Jim I like the way you just whispered. I like the way you whispered. Uh, what? Yeah. Like as if the plugs before they've been so professional and then. <laughs> Jesse threw it off with his one trying to help you out with the mailing list. So that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Thank you for having Ruben. me. Thanks, everybody else. Yeah. And go fuck yourself. Me or everyone? Talking oh, okay. shit. Talking